Welcome, YouTubians. Uh, episode number 10 on the Vorn 2.4 build. Uh, today, I am working on the clockwork, and you and I are going to go on a quick journey. Um, full disclosure, I already recorded this video once, which might be why I am a little uppity. Um, but it turns out that when you buy ABS parts from eBay, you may not get what you paid for. Ah, let me show you something real quick. So, as I said in a previous video, I bought some parts on eBay, uh, ABS printed parts. Didn't want to wait for the print it forward. Um, the whole three month thing kind of bothers me. Um, but, um, so I bought, I bought these things. So, now this is kind of what happened when I was putting things together on my first run is I had a blowout. The screw is not supposed to go all the way through. The ABS broke. I even attempted to glue it. And I was like, that is a horrible idea. And then I went and printed my own on the old Ender um, with the settings I've been using. And I got a nice part. But here's the fun part. Let me find something here. Um, do this. Just out of happenstance, I dropped that part and dropped that part, and notice they sounded different. There was a difference in the sound, I should say. So again, I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, so I'm going to pick it up. Versus... All right, so one of these, one of these, one of these is heavier. One of these is seemingly more dense by knocking on it. And one of these is the one I printed. And the one I printed, for all intents and purposes seems stronger and denser. So I have no idea what the infill is on that. I have no idea how many skin layers there are. But once I get towards the end of this or I don't have a lot of time to do a video, I'm doing a quick one. I'm going to cut that thing in half and find out what I actually got for my 150-ish dollars. Because I don't think it was a good deal. And it makes me second guess all the other parts. But we'll move forward. That being said, on to the show. All right, so clockwork um, or the extruder. Um, clockwork does sound kind of cool though. I've been soaking my needle bearings and other bearings in oil um, for a little while here. And I'm going to take those out before we get started. I don't know how much it really helps, but it makes me feel good. And that's what it's all about, I guess. Yeah, how am I going to get those ones out? I'm going to use this guy. Ooh, magnet trick. Boom, boom. There we go. All right. Put back my oiling can. And... Take these off of that, like that, and give them a quick little spin. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> Almost lost a bearing, exact same size as the magnet. All right, so this hodgy podgy that you see in front of you um, is everything we're gonna need to do what we need to do um, except for this piece this piece right here can go away because it's junk um, this is one area of the printer where obviously you don't want to skip not that I want to skip on any other areas but I am semi perfectionist so I can see in my future a rebuild upgrades new parts hopefully she'll print nice um, 
with what I have right now and I can start that process on any part that I think is going to be under a certain amount of stress. <sighs> kind of like me. All right, so heat sets. Uh, I've done a tutorial on those before, so I've gone ahead and put most of them in in advance. Uh, for the ones I have not done yet, um, or for my new printed part, all the rest of them already have them. Um, so those two are there. I'm going to clear the stuff off to the side a little bit, and I'm going to put my heat certs in on this bad boy. Um, and they're actually showing it on the second page. I've also upgraded my build manual. Um, I was using a January or February version, and this is the May version. And somebody could do a whole video on the differences between versions, because there are tons of them. Um, so you can have a seat while I do this, just so I can make sure these go in straight. Oh, let's see, the iron is hot. We're at 200 degrees. As I said before, I like to go roughly 20% lower than the print temperature of the particular plastic you're using. So we're going to go vertical, get this punched in. Nice and flush. And let's see, that's that one. I got two on the back. One is going to go right here. And the other is going to go on the other side. And here we go. I think I've said this before, but this is kind of like watching paint dry. But some people like that type of thing. Um, so note on this one right here, uh, there's not a lot of plastic that we're going into. So our heat insert is about the same thickness as the plastic so be wary about pushing it all the way through um, so once you get right to the point where you are flush stop do not go beyond flush do not go past go do not collect two hundred dollars there we go all right so that's those two, and then our last, but not least, is on the side right here. I'm doing this, kind of looking up the screen real quick. Um, if you have watched my other videos, uh, just past couple of videos, I had this three camera view. Um, look and see if it's a good thing or a bad thing, if you guys prefer to have a, a closer view, wider, um, or if this works out well. Um, I think part of it is determined by what you're watching things on, um, but there are some decent YouTube tools that allow me to see what people are watching on, and it looks like a good portion of you are watching on tablets or on computers. There are some people watching on phones, which this could be a little small, but um, just leave me a comment um, as to if this view works out pretty well for you. It stops me from having to change so often. And this last guy is... Still too proud. It's too proud. Eh. Nope, he is not where I need him. There we go. All right. Almost perfection, which is good enough. All right, back to screen. So we just put our heat inserts for that. On the new part I printed and we're moving on from there so the next part here uh, big difference between the old manual new manual uh, so keep your eyes open when there are new manuals it does look like they're making some decent steps forward in terms of uh, documentation for anybody that hasn't upgraded manuals um, the original manual states nothing at all about the spacing on this drive pinion um, here they say 3.2 millimeters from the main body. The one I had had nothing. I just made sure I kept it off of the, um, the actual motor so it wouldn't drag. So uh, 3.2 millimeters. I don't know how exact that really needs to be because honestly, 
I um, I didn't have anywhere near that far off, but um, so little trick. Uh, I'm going to use a M3 screw. Uh, I do have a ruler, but this is way easier. So M3 screw, kind of wedge it in there once we get to where we want to be. Uh, before we get there, though, I'm going to take this out. And we're going to put a little of the thread locker slash Loctite thread slash zap. I have both Loctite and Zap brand. Zap is kind of neat. Um, they're not known as well as Loctite, but they make some very good products. They actually make a lot. Ooh, they actually make um, a lot of super glues for the for the model industry. Um, different weights of super glues, um, different versions. You know, some with flexibility, some without. So um, I don't know if they have Zap where you are, but uh, if they do, give it a whirl. Like I said, they got some pretty good stuff. And I done made a mess here. So it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put this at quote unquote top dead center. Just like that. I'm going to run my M3 screw. Right like that. Kind of wedge it behind it just a little bit. Hold that where that is. Give this a tight C. And let's just make sure that is good. One more turn. There we go. All right. And that is probably just shy of 3.2 millimeters. I'm going to say it's probably three. But I don't believe the 0.2 of a millimeter is going to make a world of difference. There we go. All right. Now. Actually, it's 3.2 from the back before that. So I could be out a little bit too far. Oopsie. I'm going to back this up just a smidgen. Always something, huh? back in and then I want to drop it just a hair or actually just the thickness of the extra portion of the build out there for this pancake stepper uh, speaking of which this is a pancake model stepper um, there's a fair amount of torque required for extruding but not not as much as some of the other movable components. I mean, literally, you're just pulling and pushing filament. So, this will save a ton of weight on the um, on the hot end on the complete afterburner setup. Probably, I don't know if my scale out, but I'm gonna guess this is probably half the weight which will help with ringing and bunches of other things. All right, so stepper motor orientation. Make sure the, to orient the motor on the drive plate so that the wires are on the left side. This will allow correct routing through cable cover that will be installed later. Okay, so that being said, they want us to Leave. Let's see. Opening. Nope. Just like that. Okay. 
Let's see, they have theirs facing like this with the cutout on this side. All right, yeah, it's like that. That's how we got it. That's how we want it. All right. Now, adjustable motor position. Motor position is adjustable to allow for proper meshing of the drive gears. I recommend you start in the topmost position of the slot, but check Discord if you have questions on how to properly adjust this. Okay. So, as I said before, I've kind of done this already once today, earlier, for. This piece of crap. Oh, the other one, not this one, but my failure. And I'm not taking any of the blame for it because I definitely did not go overzealous on tightening of the screw. And after hearing the tonal difference, that's actually what threw me off. Is I was bummed out when I heard that. Ah, <sighs> so somebody long. I don't know, a month ago, told me that uh, another option for parts is going on Discord, and I don't know, I kind of shrugged it off a little bit, but yeah. Let's go ahead and put Discord up there as a higher preference of places to get things. If only my older brain could deal with Discord for more than three minutes at a time, I'd probably be pretty happy. All right, so that's on there. Screw they're speaking of specifically is this guy right here. Um, I'm just finger tightening it right now. Um, it does allow you to basically move this piece up and down. Uh, when they talk about meshing of the gears, you'll see in a moment what they're talking about specifically there. Uh, and let's see. Okay, so... Um, Let's see, ensure filament drive gear is fully seated against the drive shaft gear. Okay. Uh, bearing fit. Bearing should slip on the drive easy allowing for assembly, self centering, and retention. Okay. So, on this, we're going to set this aside a little bit. We're going to grab our pre made gear setup. I uh, don't know what kind of metal it is. I'm uh, plastic, sorry. That I'm sure is steel. Um, but hopefully it's nylon. It doesn't really look like nylon but hopefully right um, so we have that guy and then we have our um, our uh, filament drive gear uh, that's going to grab hold and pull our filament through uh, where is that's odd Oh, okay, so the one going on here, so there's two of these. Something else I didn't note the first time, I just got it right, I guess, by luck. Uh, in this uh, kit, this guy does not have any type of set screw. Okay. It's basically an idler, it's not doing anything. Okay. However, this one does have a set screw. So you want to make sure you get your set screw on your actual drive. What they're telling you to do is make sure that you seat it all the way down. So, we've done that, we've done that. Perfect. All right. Again, I'm going to put a little of the thread lock on there. I'm sure I will be able to service this if I need to in the future. However, if you look at the build manual, this is kind of in the nether regions of the printer of the hot end slash extruder. So, try to get this right the first time. There we go. There's that guy. Okay, he's on there like that. And 
what they're showing us now is the MR85 bearings. So the MR85 bearings are these little guys right here. Um, they almost look like washers unless you look really closely at them. Um, thick washers at that, but basically one on this end and one on that end. There's that. Pretty easy. So here's where things get a little odd, but not so bad. Uh, we're going to pull back around to our first portion that we built. And we're going to be inserting this into there. And one of the things they want you to check or to ensure is that your end is not sticking beyond your plastic. So basically that the pin is not going beyond the plastic. Now, the best way to ensure that, I'm going to take this back a little bit, is this bearing is just a smidgen thinner than the plastic that it's seated in. So if you take this bearing out, assuming I can get this bearing out, go and set that bearing back on top of this pin if you're showing much more than about oh what is that let's go metric on it <laughs> About a millimeter and a half. Then you're going to want to file or sand this a little bit. And as luck would have it, I have that problem. So let's get a file out. See if we can get this down a little bit. Lucky for me, my purchase from Formbot. This metal does not seem to be extremely hard, so it's filing quite well. There, I got about half to three quarters of a millimeter left on there. So, we should be good. Nice, like butter. So, at this point, we want to make sure our gears are meshing well. And we want to possibly, depending on where we're at, align them so that they're um, fully engaged, I guess you could say. So from the instructions where we kept it out, uh, my teeth are probably, 
I don't know, maybe half, half ways tooth to tooth intersected. So I'm going to push it up firmly and then I'm going to spin this to loosen it up a little bit. And then I'm going to tighten down that screw. And we left a little loose. Okay. Perfect. Now where are we at? So now they're showing us putting the uh, the back on there. So just quickly while I'm going to actually show you something here. Uh, let me see here. Bear with me. So let's see here. All right, what I did is I brought up the old manual. I just want to show you something. Um, just by chance, it may be good, or maybe a thought, to have more than one manual available to you when you build. Um, this is similar to what we saw in the other one. Actually, let me just do this. Let's go back. I'm just going to. I'm going to show some of the differences between these two. Okay, so this is this page. That's that page. So it's almost like they inverted it 180 degrees. Not 100 percent sure why, but somebody decided it was a good idea. It is enlarged more on the old one than the new. This is the new. This is the older version. Um, this page right here is skipped. So this is showing you your needle bearings, your, your latch, basically the manufacturing of the idler uh, for your filament. Um, maybe it's on another page, we'll see. Uh, but what I really wanted to show you was right here on this. So on the older version, they, two things, one is this one shows the proper redesign on this piece right here, specifically having this hole and not having the cutout, whereas the older one shows the cutout and not having that secondary hole. But what I do like about this older version is they have you assembling uh, your latch mechanism while this is still taken apart. I, I think that's easier. I, I watch people struggle trying to put it together with, with everything still put together. So I'm going to do it this way. So that being said, I'm going to set this back aside. I'm going to vary off of the, uh, the manual right now and revert back to the old one real quick, at least for a minute. And I'm going to put together our latch, basically with our thumb screw, our mechanism here, which goes like this. Make sure here. Go up actually because in the old book they actually build this in the beginning. So, this actually, let's do this whole thing. All right, so let's let's go to that. Let's do this. All right, so we already got our heat set in there. We have this piece right here, our actual contact piece. Um, we have our idling portion, we have our needle bearings. So needle bearings on the rod. I did pre-oil these. They probably come oiled, but um, I did anyways. Why not? And those go inside of that. So nice free spinning. And then these fit specifically one direction into this. There is a larger cutout on one side than the other. If you look close. Let me show that to you. So. This larger portion is where your gear is going. So that goes like that. And then this may, at least it does for me, take some force to snap into place. And then you have that. It's in there. It's locked in there by friction. 
now you have that piece you need to set up your thumb screw so some screw take that let's see here so our side with the gear this goes facing upwards and the thumb screw goes in the rear so you wind up with that and by no means you need to tighten this up very far I got maybe five or six turns on it just to make sure it doesn't fall apart while I'm doing this but it's probably more it's going to need when it's actually in use so there's that part right there yep and now that we have that we can go on to building using the old manual the innards so I'm going to take my M3 by 30s and pre send them through like so I'm going to quickly flip this over like magic to hold those up actually there's this guy it's about 30 it's a 40 all right 30 yep there you go so we have all three of those in and again uh, in the old manual the way that we do this is this oh I got that in the wrong hole oh let's see let's get that through a little tight All right, there we go. Flip that over. Okay, so this is going to go like so. It's all close, I guess. So this goes in like so. I call this the duck. Because it looks like a duck or a geese or something. And then our second piece that we put together slides over this screw on the bottom like so and when we open up this we're able to push that in and then when we latch it it simply pulls everything together which I don't dare to do without having the rest of this put together because it's going to put more stress on the plastic than really needs to be there. Um, but that is that is the mechanism open right there. Um, that is how they build it in the old manual. Switching back to the new manual. They want us to basically put everything together and then build the latch and everything on the side and kind of slide it in and i don't know why i honestly don't so now that we have that where well, we need it i'm gonna pull this back out a little bit i'm gonna slide this back in It's going to hold my screws for me. I do have this one guy that's kind of stuck. There we go. And I should, assuming that everything is where it should be, which I think we're off a little bit here. I think our gear is, where are we doing? Our gear might be a little bit off. Let's label this a little bit.
work it down. There we go. So everything's free moving. And I'm going to tighten this up. Oh, wrong way. That one might be a little bit too tight. And this guy right here. Which they don't show me putting it in quite yet. So, oh, well, it's because they want to put that latch in after. I forgot about that. Actually... That's why that one's tight, because it is actually threading into plastic. That's supposed to go in here. Like that. And this is going to show us. We can skip over that. We just did that. Same thing. Everybody agrees? Yes? Yep. It's great when you record these. Nobody to argue with. Um, and then that, yep. And then M3 by 20, which is what this guy should be. Let's confirm it. Since Nope. All right. So we've got our latch goes like that and locks in with that. Oops. Not so much. There we go. All right. So latch like that, and then we can lock it in like that. That was a really good positive latch, huh? There we go. So, to test this, um, just grab yourself a piece of filament. This is ABS I used earlier to actually print this piece. It should slide down freely. So that works pretty well. Sliding pretty freely. Uh, this and grooves cut in it because I already ran it through, but um, and then once we latch this, yeah, it's turning the, uh, the stepper to be able to pull that. So that's nice. Even if I loosen this up, it's right on there. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And then unlatch. Pulls it out. There we go. Sweet as we can be, right? Where does that leave us? That leaves us with the chain mount. So at this point, they're going to have us remove a couple screws from the back of our pancake motor. And we're going to be attaching a side shroud to that. Pull it out so we have it. And also the chain guide for that. So Here's my side shroud, the one that came with the kit I bought, the one I printed, comparable. Those actually sound the same, but there isn't much to them. Um, so first things first, I guess we got to take these screws out. Uh, let's see here, they want us to take out which ones? The ones with the hole on the side, which is the gear side over here. So. Uh, it's going to be these two bad boys, and what size are these? Oh, they're Phillips. Interesting. I need a Phillips bit. So let's grab some fill. Actually, just use a screwdriver at this point for that. 
So, what is that? That's a one. I need something bigger. I hate Phillips screws. I mean, they're better than a flathead, but not a preference. Or I would say they're not my preference. All right, form bar kit. You want a number two Phillips screwdriver for removing these screws from these pancake motors. Even with that, uh oh, it's not liking that. piece of metal on the end of this. I don't know if it's something I dug out or something that's keeping me from getting in there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it was keeping me from getting in there. That was close. I didn't want to have to drill out a screw. I'd be screwed. All right, so we got that taken out. We got our secondary piece here. And actually, this guy is going to get mounted with the curve. So on this, this has a curved side and a not so curved side. So this will call the top because it has a latch. And the bottom, the curved side is going towards the bottom. And the actual mounting uh, portion is going backwards towards where the thumb screw is. That's your alignment. And this is the top of this bracket. It's not telling what type of screws you use to put this in. So maybe it expects me to use the ones that came out. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if they're going to catch anything. Definitely not. So we'll come back to that one. Hmm. All right. Well, just so we don't lose those screws. Come on. All right. So what we'll do is we will slide this this way and get our shroud, which is going to Oh, I see what's happening. Well, that's odd. So it looks like the shroud is expected to be in two places at once. So is that supposed to Let me see what we're looking at? This is supposed to be in here first. And then that goes on as a second. What does that look like? And why does that seem wrong? It's too far out. But if we do it like that, it's too far in. Hmm. All right, let's go to the next page, see if it gives us any tips. All right, so they want us to swap those out with some M3 by 20s, which we can do M3s by 20s. like they have us putting those back on. That looks like it will work. I 
Orientation is still the same as I was showing before. So always be careful when you're um, attaching plastic to metal through a metal thread, uh, especially if it's not a heat cert. Um, definitely pull that right through if, if you did it wrong. Let's see. Over, not under. Okay. So it's telling us that the shroud portion goes over, not under. The cable cover simply hangs off the heads of the M3 by 20 fashion so it can easily be removed. Okay. We can do that. So it kind of snaps over the heads. I've got like a. That actually fits perfectly. I've got a huge amount of space in this thing. No idea why. So that positively locks onto those screw heads. So the part printed very well. And then we use an M3 by 8 to attach. So M3 by 8. The screw we have a million of. It's going to go into here. So there's Shroudy McShroudison. This is going to be easily be removed. I don't know how easy that is to remove, but oh. There's one side. Er. Yeah. All right, we're going to lock that too. Might as well. Here we go. All right, so that's locked. That shroud's on. And it's all locked into space and place. And fun stuff. All right, so I think this is where I'm going to cut off for now for this video. Um, basically, get that all put together. Next portion wants us to actually start building. Um, I'm actually going to have to remove some parts off the printer to, um, to get things that I need to build off of. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. We're getting close to that 100 mark that I'm looking for. Um, so I can start doing these lives and kind of have some reassurance that I'll have people actually watching and commenting and questioning things I'm doing, uh, which would be real fun because I make tons of mistakes and I'm sure people would love to call me out on them. That being said, thank you for watching. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll see you next time.